Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be finding the sum of powers of i but with alternating signs. So we're supposed to add 1 minus i plus i squared minus i to the third plus i to the fourth minus i to the fifth all the way up to i to the power 16. In other words, even powers of i are going to come with a plus sign and the odd powers are going to come with a minus sign. And we're going to be finding the sum, writing it in simplest form. Okay? We've done quite a few videos on sums of powers of i with different coefficients, with different scenarios, and this one is just an alternating sum. Okay, there's a couple ways to approach this problem, and let's start with the first method. So the first method, for my first method, I kind of want to separate the even powers and odd powers. Why? Because the, all the even powers, including i to the power 0, comes with a plus sign, so I can kind of group them together, and the rest will, will, will have a minus sign. So it's going to look like this. I have 1 plus i squared plus i to the fourth plus i to the sixth, and of course this is going to go all the way up. To, I don't even need i to the sixth. You get the idea. And I'm going to stop at i to the power 16. That's the highest power I have, right? And then minus, if I put a negative sign outside the parentheses, then everything inside the parentheses will be, will have a plus sign because I'm negating it already, right? So we're going to have i plus i to the third. This is going to go all the way up to i to the power 15. Does that make sense? So these are going to be kind of like skipping uh, powers, goes up by twos. And let's go ahead and find each sum separately. Now to be able to find each sum separately, we have again different approaches. For example, one of them is just going to use what is 1, what is i squared, what is i to the fourth, right? Let's go ahead and take a look. One approach is 1, i squared is negative 1. So it's going to be like this, 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1, so on and so forth. And i to the 16 is going to be obviously a positive 1 because 16 is a multiple of 4. So the question is, the million dollar question, or maybe half a million, right? How many ones we have and how many negative ones we have? So which one is going to stay after we cancel out everything, right? That's an interesting question. Like what happens if you have add these infinitely many times? Do you end up with 1 or negative 1 or 0 or even 1 half? right? That's an infinite sum, but it doesn't converge, and you can prove it by looking at his uh, subsequences. Anyways, that's a different story. I digress. Now, here's what we're going to do. We have, how many terms do we have? First of all, we have to determine, right? Uh, from the zero power, uh, I could probably write it as i to the power zero, we have zero, and then kind of like a zero times two, and then 1 times 2, and then 2 times 2, and then finally 8 times 2. So we have 9 terms. That's an odd number of terms, so one of them is going to um, stay. And since everything comes in pairs, either the first or the last number, doesn't matter which one, by the way, they are the same, so that's going to stay. You can also think of it this way, 1 minus 1, 1 minus 1, they're all going to pair up, leaving us with a positive 1 here. Make sense? Okay, great. Now, you can go ahead and calculate the second one similarly. And how many terms do we have? Well, since they paired up nicely before, did they? No, not really. Because originally I had 17 terms. And I had 8 here, so I must have 9 terms here, right? What does that tell you? One of these terms is going to stay. And since the first term is fine, we can leave that alone. Or if you want to do this with the i to the power 15, let's just go ahead and do the work, shall we? So we're going to have i, and then i cubed is going to be negative i. And then I'm going to end up with, you know, i to the power 15. What is i to the power 13? Let's think about that first. That's i. And then i to the power 15 is going to be negative i. Make sense? Wait a minute. I said 8, but I was wrong. This was 8 terms. This is actually supposed to be nine, um, 8 terms. This was 9 terms. This is 8 terms. So guess what? They're going to pair up nicely. Everything is going to cancel out, leaving us with 0. Big fat 0. So, the answer is going to be 1. Easy, right? Okay, that's going to be the first method, so the answer is 1. Don't remember that. I was going to say, don't forget that. No, just forget it, and now we're going to do the second method. Okay, ready? 
So we have 1 minus i plus i squared minus i cubed dot 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 all the way up to i to the power 16. Great. So another way to look at it is without separating the powers, looking at this from a geometric sum perspective. What is that supposed to mean? So I'm going to write it as follows. 1 plus i, but it's a negative i, so let me go ahead and put the negative inside the parentheses. And then plus negative i squared, right? Is that going to work? And then plus negative i cubed. If you cube negative i, you get negative i cubed, right? Because negative 1 cubed is negative 1. So basically, and I can do this for the uh, 16 power as well because 16 is even, so it's going to take care of that. Notice that I do have the following sum. 1 plus r plus r squared plus r cubed dot 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 all the way up to r to the power 16. Did I tell you? 1 plus r plus r squared plus dot 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 all the way up to r to the power n minus 1, which indicates that there are n terms. A lot of times people are going to finish with this, but I like to finish with r to the n. Anyways, this is equivalent to 1 minus r to the power n divided by 1 minus r. And I think we talked about the proof of this previously. I can't remember which video, but we've done it before. So that's going to be the formula. And based on this formula, this sum is going to be 1 minus r to the 17 minus 1 minus r, or this sum is going to be 1 minus negative i to the 17 over 1 minus negative i. You've got to be careful. r is negative i, not i. So you have to take that into consideration. Make sense? Now let's go ahead and erase the last two rows, and we're going to simplify our expression. So how do we simplify this? Well, it only has one i in it, so it should be easy to simplify. What is negative i to the 17th power? First of all, 17 is an odd number, so this is going to be the same thing as negative i to the 17th power is going to be the same as negative i to the 17. So another negative is going to make it positive. So this is going to be 1 plus i to the 17 divided by 1 plus i. Because negative negative is going to make a positive, right? Well, what is i to the power 17? i to the power 17 is i to the 16 times i. And i to the 16 is i to the 4th to the 4th, which is 1. So it's just i. So this becomes 1 plus i divided by 1 plus i. Since i does not equal negative 1, remember, i squared is negative 1, but i does not equal negative 1. This is equal to 1. And we got the exact same answer as before. Of course, that should be the same, right? Great. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.